This is a picture of the Macintosh MA252 Hybrid Integrated Amplifier. This is a picture of a man who bought a Macintosh MA252 Hybrid Integrated Amplifier. Why isn't he smiling? Hi, I'm Bob, and you are in the United States of Analog. Welcome. And you could do me a favor by doing all that stuff under the screen here. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, support the channel in any way that's meaningful to you. It will go a long way into proving to my wife that this isn't a complete waste of time. So help a brother out and do all that stuff. And I apologize for the intro. It was a little dramatic, a little clicky. Well, I don't know if an intro can be clicky, a thumbnail can be, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. I just feel like if it can work for cable news, it can work for YouTube. I'm trying to grab your attention, and to be honest with you, it's not too far off the mark, all right? But, spoiler alert, I think this video is going to have a happy ending. Let's hope so, anyway, because my entire life, I wanted a piece of Macintosh gear. When I was in my early 20s, I used to spend my Saturday mornings at a place called High Fidelity Inc. on Lavaca here in beautiful Austin, Texas. And I was what was known as a nuisance client. <laughs> I had no real money to spend. My career, my life hadn't taken off yet. But I was there dreaming every Saturday morning and they had this thing that they did uh, once a month or so. It was sponsored by Macintosh and it was like an amplifier clinic. You could carry your amplifier from home to high fidelity and they would uh, put it on a scope or whatever, put it on the bench, plug it in and give you a written report and some graphs and figures and stuff letting you know, you know, what your amplifier was capable of. I think at the time I had a Marantz 1060 and I would be thrilled, you know, when, when they gave me the report and it was getting like four watts a channel more than was, uh, you know, was in the specs. You know, I think it was their way of kind of getting you uh, interested in Mac gear. Little did they know that I didn't have the money for that, but I dreamed and I dreamed and I dreamed. And eventually I got to a point in life where maybe I could have a piece of Mac gear. I wanted a 275, I gotta be honest with you, but that's a power amplifier and that meant I would have to get a pre-amplifier as well and I'd want it to be Macintosh, of course. So, you know, I couldn't make those numbers work for me. So when I saw the first pictures of the MA252 online, I was already hooked on looks alone. The glowing tubes, the monogrammed heat sink. I don't even have monogrammed towels and they, and, and, and they were offering me a monogrammed heat sink. It was, it was chromed up. It's solid state and tubes, man, 100 watts a channel. It was checking all the boxes for me. And I thought, I thought maybe if I made some lifestyle changes, I could actually afford this thing at somewhere south of $4,500. So I went down to my dealer and I ordered one. And a few weeks later, it arrived. There was quite a bit of demand initially, and I was glad to get my hands on it. This is the part of the story that takes a little bit of a swerve, all right? But before we get to that, let's look at some beautiful B-roll that I shot. I wanted to, I really wanted to do this unit justice and give you some great B-roll, so check it out while I tell you a little bit more about the MA252. Of course, all the details are on Mac's site, but it's basically 100 watts into 8 ohms, 160 into 4. The preamp section is tube-driven, and the amplifier section is solid state. There's a great phono section. There's balanced inputs. Pretty decent discrete headphone amplifier. There's bass and treble controls, though those will have to be accessed inside of the unit there. This is not a Macintosh with auto formers. The tubes are 12AX7A times 2 and 12AT7 times 2. It has a monogrammed heat sink, as I mentioned. There's a power guard circuit, and there's one of my initial issues. Coax input, optical input, USB input, and a single subwoofer output. Look, there's much more to this amplifier than uh, I can get into here and that I can even remember. But, you know, again, all the, all the information's on the Macintosh site. But this is where the story takes a little swerve now because I was not initially enamored with this product, with this unit, 
when I got it into my home and started listening to it. And I listen to it a lot. I've given it a lot of time over the past few years to kind of burn in and settle in. And it hasn't been my favorite. And maybe my expectations were too high. You know, initially I thought it was underpowered. It felt underpowered to me. I was expecting thunderous, thunderous sound. I was expecting that 100 Macintosh watts would be like 200 Sansui watts. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm picking on Sansui. It doesn't make any sense. I don't even think they're around. It just what it's what came to mind. Also, this power guard thing, man, this amp constantly clipped. And and maybe I was using speakers at the time that were a little inefficient, but I would turn this thing up and those, those tubes would go from green to orange when the sound started clipping. I called the Macintosh engineers. I didn't get to a call center. I talked to an engineer. I, I talked to somebody who had firsthand knowledge of this piece of equipment, and I, and I explained all the shortcomings that I was finding, all my hesitations and reservations, and they seemed... I don't want to say they didn't seem interested, but... The general vibe I got after that conversation was, well, that's what it is. That's what it does. And that didn't instill a lot of confidence in me. And maybe maybe he was having a bad day or maybe he was tired of answering these questions. But I thought they were legitimate questions. And I wasn't looking for a replacement unit or anything like that. I was just trying to trying to get, get some answers. And, and, and some of it may have been my own fault. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of wires behind my uh, BDI cabinet and and maybe something got crossed and there was some noise or whatever, but it was clipping and I did feel like it was, it was low powered. So for all those reasons and also the fact that I got a Techniques SUG 700, which I thought was a more reference sounding amp than the Macintosh, you know, the Macintosh didn't get much duty. It kind of got pushed to the side. So the net net is it's it's been on the sidelines for a while. All right, let's get down to it. That's the overview. That's the plot. Now we need to find out if there's any redemption with the MA252. I got it out of the closet. I gave it a good polish. I connected it to my best speakers and my best turntable. And it's time to see if the Macintosh can hold its place as a member of my family, <laughs> my audio family, all right? Now, I'm going to judge the Mac based on form, sound, fit, and I'm not going to do value because, uh, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. It's not going to be in everyone's budget. You got the money for a Mac or you don't. I actually didn't, but I made the sacrifice. Form, sound, and fit. Is it is it going to fit in my lifestyle? Is it going to become a member of my family and stay there. First, let's talk about the form. Of course, it's gonna be beautiful. It's a Macintosh, all right? It's got substance, it's got style, it's got a nod to the past. And Macintosh has admitted in their promotional materials that they took design cues from the 275, so I like that. It's the kind of equipment that's built well, it's gonna last a lifetime, something that you can pass down. I love all of those things. I don't know about the 275 comparison. In fact, as you can see in this picture here, I actually tried to turn the MA252 sideways to get those, to make those design cues a little more visible. And it really doesn't work out because you don't have the benefit of seeing the OLED and you know it is a it is an integrated so you do need to see volume control and you need to see input and all that stuff. But it's a nice thought. The problem with all these, you know, 275 design cues is that they're kind of on the side of the unit and sometimes that can be blocked by other equipment on your shelf, on your uh, low boy or whatever you call it, your BDI cabinet in my case. I love the form. It's something that I can live with for a long time. I know it's gonna be around for a long time. I love the chrome accents. I love the knob feel. I love the display. And I love those tubes. Those tubes don't really glow green. That's an LED from underneath the tube. It starts out as orange. Right. When the amp is ready to play, it turns green. Okay, that's all done with smoke and mirrors and LEDs, but it looks fantastic. And again, 
you know, a nod to the modern day 275. I love the form factor. I love the looks. I love the feel. 100%. You had me from hello. Okay, let's talk about the sound because this is where things get a little more interesting now. You know, when I first got the 252, I didn't have a lot of other stuff, a lot of other amps to listen to. So the Mac admittedly is warm. That's all I had to listen to. So I was getting warm all the time, 24 <laughs> seven. And that's great. That's great for a Sunday afternoon when you just want to kick back and not analyze things. But now that I have other options, I see the other flavors that are out there. And, and we talk a lot about on this channel about different audio equipment having different flavors. And that's a good thing. If you're fortunate enough to have the cash to buy yourself some more flavors, that can be a lot of fun. The Macintosh is a, is a great sounding amp. It has a distinct, warmish, punchy, syrupy, gooey <laughs> flavor, <laughs> all right? The high pitch wine is gone. I don't know if it's because I got the amp out of the closet and reconnected it and the, maybe the, the wiring is better or whatever. I'm not experiencing that with my Forte 4s, which I'm using for the test. I think, I think the Forte 4s are perfect, perfect match for the, for the Macintosh, not only in look, but in sound. Um, the, 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 the brightness, not harshness, but brightness of the Fortes is kind of tamed by the warmishness of the uh, Macintosh. So it's, it's a win-win. They meet in the middle somehow, and that's a good thing. Also, my studio deck from MoFi is new to the system, and that's benefited the sound with the Macintosh greatly as well. So everything seems to be working right now. I've got a system that looks vintage, sounds vintage, and I have no complaints other than sometimes I want to listen to a different flavor, a different sound. And, and luckily I have that in the techniques. Oh, and I should update you on the, the clipping situation. Since the Fortes are, are very efficient, I haven't seen those orange lights pop on for a while. Um, you know what? At the end of the day, maybe that's a feature that... Maybe I don't need to know that an amp is clipping, all right? Because it only happens for a second or two, and maybe I'm better off not knowing. So Macintosh, maybe keep the power guard, just don't give me the visuals of the clipping because it makes me lose confidence in, in your product, if that makes any sense at all. Now fit, does the Macintosh fit into my lifestyle? Does it fit into my system? Yes. Now, more than ever, I'm glad I've taken the Macintosh out of the closet and put it back into service because I want to hear it. I want people to see it. And I think when I bought the Macintosh, because of the amount of money that it cost, I think I was over critical of, of what it was, was doing. I expected it to be perfect. It's something I had waited for for years and years and decades, and I finally got it. And maybe it didn't live up to all my expectations, but now that I have a variety of gear, a variety of speakers, I'm glad I have it. It's gonna find, uh, it's gonna find a place in one of my systems. I mean, come on, it's a Mac. I, I never was gonna get rid of it. I was just waiting for the right opportunity, the right situation for it to shine. And, 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 and shine it does, but on the warm side of shine. <laughs> it's like a, a, a pull-up. No, pull-up is a, that's a thing, that's a kid's diaper thing. I mean, it's like a Snuggie. It hugs you. It, 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 it makes you feel warm. That's, that's the operative word, warm. I've used it 50 times now. It's warm. And on some days, especially Sunday afternoons, that's a good thing. I hope you enjoyed my overview of the MA252. Yeah, I sounded like a big baby. We should all be fortunate enough to have a Macintosh in our system. I have one. I just, it fell out of graces, and now it's back into my good graces. And for that, I thank the audio gods, and I thank you for being in the United States of Analog.
Too much. I don't know how they do it. <laughs>